Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to today's session about Blue Canoe's new teacher pilot project and the free eight week classroom trial. I'm Karen Taylor of the Color Vowel Chart, uh, joined here by Jennifer Campion, who's coming into the room, and a number of teachers who um, at this time are all Color Vowel teachers in one part of their journey or another. Um, but that's to say that Blue Canoe and Color Vowel are intricately tied together. So I think it's important to provide a bit of context uh, for that. Uh, I'm going to give a short presentation and then uh, mixed with questions for you. So I'm going to start with a, a couple of questions that will help me shape this presentation. This for me today is partly an information session to give information to you and partly an information session for me to collect opinions and perspectives and context from you. Um, in the end of, by the end of our time together today, I hope to leave you excited about what we're doing. Uh, it's new and I think it's innovative. Uh, it's forward looking and it involves you with the teachers. Um, so let me start with my questions. Um, the first thing I'll do is make Jennifer the hostess. Uh, let's start with that. Everybody say hi to Jennifer. We always need to give Jennifer lots of loves. Uh, <laughs> anytime you are wondering who to give love to, make it Jennifer. Uh, <laughs> she keeps our, our companies operating. And I, I say companies plural because it's been a wild summer. Um, so my first question for you is, let's do a raise of hands in the room. Uh, raise your hand if you identify as an ESL or EFL teacher. That's English as a second language or English as a foreign language. Even if the acronym isn't that much a title you've thought about, I think all the hands went up. We all work with English language learners, either in an English speaking context or in a foreign language context, right? Um, okay, so that was the easy one, just to get you exercising your arm. Okay, the next one. Uh, raise your hand if you consider yourself a pronunciation teaching teacher, someone who really does address pronunciation. Uh, and, and there are no wrong answers here. That could be not yet. That could be want to be, you know. Okay, it's kind of this way. Okay, thank you, Laurie. Uh, Naidu. Uh, great. Welcome, Naidu. Good to see you. Okay. Yeah. How many of you consider yourselves personally tech savvy and up to date? And this, I want to see kind of a yes or like, eh, or, eh, or not so much something, some kind of hand signal that tells me how you feel about your own use of tech. Um, okay. Kind of, eh, and some are up and okay, great. Um, and finally, how much of you, how many of you, you all considered yourself ESL, ESL, EFL teachers. How many of you consider yourselves teachers of technology? Meaning, um, you know, that I know that that's part of what I teach. Okay, so fewer, right? Not really. So my provocative uh, statement for the day is, I think we all have to start identifying as that final thing. We have to. Um, every ESL teacher is now immersed in technology in a way that we weren't two years ago. You know, two years ago, I could have said many ESL teachers are online teaching. Many of them are not. And I always thought of my core, my adult ed identity, um, you know, out in the community centers, out in the nonprofits, out in the K through 12 systems here in the United States. Uh, teaching face-to-face, -face, everything's paper-based because our students are face-to-face -face and paper-based. But that's not the case anymore, right? How many of you have taught online at least once in the past year? Yeah, so we've all done it. And yet, you know, there's a gap between how we identify and what we do on a daily basis. And I said once a year, but I think probably most of us do it more than that, right? Um, and it's not going to go back, I, I don't think. I think we're going to continue teaching more and more online. Um, any anecdotes quickly of our students who have really found more liberation in learning online? Has that been the case for anybody? Where they're able to attend classes more frequently because they're at home? A lot of students with children at yeah. home, right? So, and they, and my problem right now is I'm, we're doing hybrid and I have a lot of the class is consecutive. We do online one day, we, one day a week, and then we do in class. But I have a lot of students that can only come online, and so they're missing the in class. Mm -hmm. But it is. <laughs> That's right. So, you know, yes, a lot of 
barriers, but at the same time, a lot of advantages that come with, with overcoming those barriers. Any other important points to make about what this I, has brought to students? Yeah. I know I, my, it, my, it, students, my students really like it much better in class. They like it more, more in, you mean face-to-face? Face-to-face, yeah. yeah I mean, they prefer they, they it. Get on, they get online if they have to. But they would much prefer. They all they all much prefer to be in class, especially well, with early learners. Yeah, and I think we all prefer face to face in a sense, but we can't deny that there are certain advantages. More than that, though, realistically, it's simply that it's not going to go away. It's just a fact, right? We're going to be doing more and more online, and our students are going to need to be able to do more and more online if they want to advance in their jobs and their careers. Okay. Um, so I'm going to posit that kind of that provocative notion that um, we're going to mark Blue Canoe as becoming a company that doesn't just provide an app to learners. We provide, um, say, a, a dashboard and insights to teachers, which we'll talk about today. Uh, that's a big part of it. Um, but we also, at the same time, are when we are onboarding our students to a powerful app like Blue Canoe, we're actually training our students in new technologies how to troubleshoot, how not to lose confidence when, you know, you try to sign into something and you forgot your password and all of these things that we're, we're able to do that some of you raised your hands like this about your own technology, we're providing that education to our learners, whether or not it's part of the curriculum. Okay. Um, if, if you still aren't sure or convinced, think where else are they going to get these, these skills? Um, I think it's with you. So, you know, all in balance, but I think we're, we need to take advantage of modeling where we can. Okay. Um, so some people who are watching this, the recorded session, um, are completely new to Color Vowel and Blue Canoe. So let's take a moment, and this is kind of a good refresher for everybody because the two organizations are always evolving. And I want all of you to know about that too. So I'm just kind of moving things around for a second. There we go. All right. So today's session again is about the teacher pilot project and the free eight week classroom trial. Both of these are new titles for everybody because I created them in about a week and a half ago. <laughs> so we'll find out what that's all about. Um, today I have things flipped around. Usually my little guy is standing on the color vowel chart with a tiny app in his hand. And today he's standing on the app um, and he's up here holding the chart. Uh, so it's just a change of emphasis. However, Blue Canoe and Color Vowel are two companies that work together uh, for a larger mission. The Color Vowel approach is a set of brain-based strategies that rewire the language brain for language learners uh, aiming to improve their speaking confidence in English. We focus on stress and vowel sounds um, as the, the main priority of speech because that's what takes us the furthest in being understood. And then there's additional finer work on all those other pronunciation uh, skills that we often hear about and know about. Uh, we've been doing this for over 20 years. Uh, we've been in partnership with a lot of wonderful organizations that have expanded our reach to over a million users over those years. So it's very exciting um, having started in a classroom, being passed around by teachers at conferences, and now we're a worldwide tool. Uh, Blue Canoe is the ColorVal method gone mobile. So over the past five years, we've developed this app called Blue Canoe for learners. The question here is what do learners do outside of class to help their, them, themselves improve their spoken English. And um, it in the past has been, well, I hope they go out and talk to people, or I hope they go to a cafe and make a friend. You know, There's always been this kind of theoretical, like, please go practice your spoken English, um, which is all possible. However, without somebody to correct you, you don't know how you're doing in that practice. And some learners reasonably wonder if practicing without corrective feedback is maybe even a bad idea uh, if they do too much of that and not enough guided practice. So Blue Canoe is that guided practice. Uh, it is built around the color vowel system with voice recognition and artificial intelligence that provides color vowel feedback on what the app hears. Okay, so there's voice recognition, putting it through our system and then giving a correction 
that the learner can use to make an improvement. We provide pronunciation lessons, games, videos, quizzes, and the ColorVal Dictionary, which is its own little animal with a browser extension. Uh, so if you're not aware of the browser extension that you can uh, load into your Firefox or your Google Chrome or Safari, uh, that is a little jewel to look for and use with your students, and it's free. All right. Um, the chart itself is at the center of all of this. And um, the, the folks who are right here in the room with me have seen this a lot. Um, a couple of people might be newer and definitely our listeners out there are a lot of new people. But essentially what we've done is we've taken the vowel sounds of English, we've created a visual map for those, and we've named each sound by using a color word and a noun that it modifies. So that green and T both contain that E sound. Uh, so we'll call that the green sound, or we can simply provide a visual image that represents that sound, E. And we're able to sidestep the complexities of international phonetic alphabet and other systems that are grapheme based or letter based that look like letters in other words. And so as we come around, we're able to create an image for each one of these sounds. These are the images that occur in Blue Canoe. So the teacher can be teaching by day, let's call it by day and by night, right? By day with the color vowel chart and by night the learner is practicing with these color vowel images as iconic reminders of the many sounds of English and how they differ from one another just by the fact that they are different in their color and their image. And then there's later work where we can actually work on the quality of that vowel sound. Uh, but more about that another time, okay? What we're here to talk about today um, is Blue Canoe and this concept of getting on board. Now, this is the part of the show where I will use a metaphor until maybe it won't even uh, dissolve. You know, some metaphors break apart at some point. Um, I keep working on the Blue Canoe metaphor because it's offered a lot to my thinking. Um, so if you're a metaphor, fan, then you're all set. And if you get irritated by these things, you know, just bear with me. <laughs> it's worth it. Um, but getting on board is, is the question here. What is getting on board for you? Um, and when you're onboarding your passengers, when you're putting your students uh, and connecting them with the app, um, if you're here, it's because you've either already onboarded your students at least once with Blue Canoe. Uh, then I ask you, how did that go? And did everybody succeed or did you find some passengers left standing at the dock? Did somebody fall in the water? Uh, did you have a life vest for them? Um, what kind of tears were shed? Any? Because <laughs> I know that anytime we're talking about technology, somebody's apt to cry, depending on how they're feeling that day. Honestly, I've watched it. Um, part of my background comes with a few years at the Arlington Refugee uh, an employment program in Arlington, Virginia. And I was the tech teacher, the tech coordinator for teachers. And so I, I watched this in, in person, right? Um, now, if you've never used Blue Canoe yet, uh, you can get your free account. That's part of what I'll provide you with today is a link to get started with that. Um, but I no longer feel comfortable with what we've, some of the programs we've done in the past have said, here's the app, use it with your students, let us know what you think. I just don't think that's enough. And so we've launched in the past week and a half, a program that is an open course. It's, it's free and it's ongoingly available to you called the teacher pilot program. And so here I will now um, stop share for a moment to, to gauge. I really wanna hear from the teachers who have used Blue Canoe with learners and hear from you how that onboarding has gone because then I'll be able to introduce you to the teacher pilot program space and see where we start to address those issues, okay? So please feel free to use the chat and open your microphones, uh, but what kinds of things came up either with you, your own use of Blue Canoe and, and really try to think back to, I wanna focus on the negative here, the glitches, the misstarts, the trying and the trying again, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, what kinds of things can come up as a problem when you're onboarding? Yeah. One thing that I found was um, on the 
oh gosh, the third icon at the very bottom brings up the vowel sounds that you just that you just talked about mm -hmm. and they can press on the icon and hear green t e again because maybe they have forgotten what it sounded like in classroom in the classroom we did notice with the free one week though that there are two icons missing so we had to go over them together okay so let me um and we'll kind of take these one by one so what you're describing, and I want to um, thank you, Lori, for describing this. You're describing, um, say, an encounter inside of the app and a question that comes from what you see inside the app. So that's I'm just going to kind of contextualize each of these observations. Let's look at that and see what Lori's talking about. Uh, we'll take my um, iPhone here, see if I can follow all the little steps to share screen. Here we go. Great. I'm in, ha, <laughs> all right. So here we are in the app and Lori, I think you're talking about the color vowel right down here, the color vowel chart. If you have your phones, by the way, and you already have Blue Canoe, you can follow along, right? And uh, the first thing, Lori, I think you said two things in your observation. One, you said, uh, was it that the sound didn't start, it didn't work for everybody? Is that, was that a comment? Oh, actually, you. we did have a couple students that said, a couple of their icons did not work, uh, but no, there was um, orange door and Auburn dog. Auburn dog. Those right. are the okay. two icons that we discovered weren't there, but I just made sure to go over them several Good. times so they could hear it in the back of their head. Good. So I'm going to just mention in case anybody hasn't seen this before that you can mouse, so you can take your finger and tap on any of these. Red pepper. Eh. and listen to the sound, right? Gray day, A. Okay, so there is a sound behind every symbol, and these are the same sounds that you see on the color vowel chart, minus two. Oh, um, so good. Oh, I can hear sorry. everybody practicing. <laughs> so this is a, a kind of what I would call a content question, like a why is question for Karen or for anyone on the team, where you say, why isn't Auburn dog there, or why isn't orange door there? And uh, we have good answers for these things. And so I'm so glad you asked. Um, and so I'll, I'll answer briefly and know that there's a deeper answer with a video. And I'll, I'll take note of that. If Jennifer, if you could make note of Lori's question, we can send her a video about that. Um, but in short, they're not missing. Um, they were intentionally omitted. And that's because while the, um, while the color vowel chart is made for teachers to use with learners, meaning learners don't buy the chart, right? Uh, teachers have the chart, they teach with it. Um, so that's a, a tool that represents the wide range of dialects and vowel sounds that all teachers uh, bring to the table. And so a single teacher may not have all of these sounds. And that is then to say that not all of these sounds are critical to being understood. So Auburn dog is one of those that while it might be a strong feature of your own accent or dialect of English, it is not a necessary vowel to being understood. And neither is orange door as a concept. So that's the short answer. And you can say, well, why? And there's more behind that when we provide training to you, okay? Um, but long story short, really what we do in color vowel in blue canoe is we reduce the amount of cognitive load always when we have the chance. So the, the smallest number of necessary sounds in English are right here. With okay. these, your students can be understood, okay? Uh, if you have a bit of cognitive dissonance around that, like, whoa, how, how can they not have Auburn dog? That's probably a, a case where you have a strong Auburn dog vowel in your dialect and come and talk to me in, in training and I'll work with you. Uh, so you can hold both things in two hands, Auburn dog for yourself and not Auburn dog for your students necessarily. Yeah, Doug. When you look up a word in the dictionary, I just looked up qua, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but it, it, it shows you the Auburn dog. Right. And you can actually push the icon and it'll give you the sound. Exactly. So it, so it is, thank you. Thank you so much for the reminder, Doug. So you can look up a word that does have that variation. Uh, the student can see that olive is a perfectly workable olive sock. vowel. Olive uh, cloth. And Auburn dog, 
Oh, okay. Now the person who listens to this audio that we see right here with their Auburn ears will hear Auburn, but the person who doesn't have Auburn in their dialect will hear Olive. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> kind of quiet. It's kind of wild, but true. Okay. Um, so we'll have, this is very valid. I want to say, thank you, Lori. Um, these kinds of questions are what we call content questions. Mm -hmm. So then the question would be, well, gosh, where do I get those questions answered? it's going to be over in our teacher pilot program where we offer all of these answers and resources because you'll have access, you'll raise the questions yourself and we'll have that bank of answers. So that's one category of questions, okay? Um, next question, or sorry, these are, these are pitfalls and things you've experienced with the app onboarding. Janet. Yeah, well, last year I tried the free semester with my class and I, I on, onboarded, at least 10, 10 students, but only two of them could actually figure it out to actually get started and, and use it. It started sometimes, you know, you would send them the password and if they didn't use it right away, it would expire. And so some people never got past that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we were on Zoom, so I couldn't really help people. I'm thinking this year when we're in person, I'll, I, I, everybody can bring their phone to class and we can say, okay, hold up your phone and let's go because half of the class was already using their phone to go on Zoom. So we couldn't like, you know. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so there are a couple of things we've changed in the past year that are worth knowing about. Um, and so I'll say that it used to be a little bit more like any kind of app where when the learner got their account, um, they would receive an email. It would have a password in there, but guess what? Not all learners know what to do with uh, email. They may not even know how to check their email, in fact. In fact, <laughs> they may give an email address that does not exist because you're just making your way through a system you don't know. And you know there's supposed to be an arroba or an at sign in there. And you know about Gmail. And so you just make something up to get through the moment when something is being asked of you. And you don't want to say, um, you don't even know to say, I don't really know what this is. So we've actually run into that many times where uh, we do all this troubleshooting on the back end with our, our support team, only eventually days later, you know, with a lot of inquiry, find out that that's not even actually an email address. Or it's an email address, but they've never checked their email before and don't have the password to it because their son or their daughter or a neighbor set them up or a previous teacher with good intentions. Right. Or right. So many other barriers. So that's been one piece. Um, quickly, what we did is a, what we call a pivot is we said, OK, we're not going to make them um, use a password from an email. We're just going to tell everybody what the password is. And so uh, when a student has a brand new account, they know to sign in with this one password that you know what it is. And I won't say that now online just because, you know, passwords are passwords. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can do it in class together and you can watch them go through each step. Okay. More recently, one of our wonderful teachers, Lynn Swanda, some of you know her, uh, made a step-by-step -step onboarding video that your learner can follow on their own. It's spoken you know, nice and slowly, um, or they can follow along with you in class or you can use it to train yourself so that you're the one delivering that set of instructions. So many ways to use that lesson. Um, that is also in the pilot project area that we'll be introducing you to, okay? So that's just to address a few of Janet's comments. Um, but the other thing I'll, I'll mention and I'll show you is that if you are teaching online, then you think, well, how am I supposed to know if they got on, you know, into the app? and uh, that's where the teacher dashboard comes in. Okay. We provide a teacher dashboard called Clipfolio. It's a tool that uh, provides information about how often a student uses the app, uh, how long they use the app each time, and so forth. So I'm just going to show you one example of Clipfolio uh, where you, you know, we can't see the user data. I uh, just kind of hid those names, so it's not anything you can see. But what you can see here is that this is a group of current students. Uh, you can see the last time they've played. So I could rank it by um, the last time these students play. Gosh, it was today um, and yesterday. A lot of people played yesterday and some people will play tonight, right? 
or you can rank it by the total number of um, days that they've met their goal uh, or from lowest to highest. You know, um, I can look at it this way, uh, goals met this week. Well, what is a goal? So in, in the app, we provide a daily plan called today's plan. And when you complete the plan, you meet your goal. So it's a way of talking about engagement. Uh, in this group, quite a few people have met their goal uh, this week, you know, at least four times, which is a really good minimum of engagement. We like to see sixes and sevens, um, but this isn't the end of the week this week. So look at last week. Last week, if I rank those, look at all these nice folks who, you know, hit sixes and sevens. And then there was a, a drop off toward the bottom of some other folks who have not been able to play. And now I know who to approach and who to text privately and who to talk to in class and say, hey, you know, you have this powerful tool, what's going on? Um, and it might range from, oh, I'm not, I don't know how to use it yet. Um, like this person down here hasn't actually registered yet. So I can say, oh, you need to go ahead and log in. Let's do it, right? Um, or another person who isn't fully active yet. So we provide you with a status and definitions of what each of these things mean, okay? Are there any questions from folks who have already used Clipfolio specific barriers, uh, challenges that you've had in using that that you'd like to raise? I know it's a strange question. I'm saying what, what's bothered you? And in Karen. Yeah. How long has Portfolio been used? Clipfolio? Oh, it's just, it's a tool we've been using since we've created the app. So it's a third party tool. Um, we've had it since we've made the app public if that answers your question. Yeah, and so that's part of uh, what you receive is access to Clipfolio that comes with anytime you're using Blue Canoe with your students, okay? Great. So I, Karen, I had one student that had an email address from China and he was not, he could not use that email address. Right, yeah. And I don't know if that's changed since nowadays, but yeah, at the beginning. So I'll say that there are a couple of, of challenges to um, running an app. And one of those is China. Um, China puts up, uh, Joan is nodding her head. She knows a little too much about this. <laughs> uh, maybe you can rephrase it, but essentially China has a, a digital wall um, okay. that makes it difficult for the average user to access resources outside of China. Right, that's and, right. He couldn't, he couldn't download the app. Yeah. And yet we do have users in China. They right. are connected with resources where they can use what's called a VPN. Mm -hmm. uh, Joan, you want to expand on that at all? What's a VPN? Oh, that's the virtual, yeah. I forgot the P in that. But they, yeah. they, 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 most Chinese people, I think, know how to get around things. Okay. You know, I'm sure as things get a little more ramped up in China, they're not going to figure that out. But most of your students should know or do know. They're like, oh yeah, yeah. I want to watch YouTube, which they're not allowed right. to. So they go, they get that VPN and stuff like that. Okay. But um, that's going to get worse here in the next couple of weeks because next week is national day. So they tend to really close down around this time of year. So so that's one of those instances where you know we'll get questions that we can only answer so far and we can only fix it so far. Right. Um, because it's China and I'm, I'm so much smaller than China. <laughs> That's right. The other thing, can I also I, say that um, uh, China has been cracking down in the past month or so. They've got new regulations um, and they, and basically they've um, uh, broken arrangements between Chinese universities and many of the American universities um, and they're making it uh, much more difficult to even get through to the v with the VPNs. And, and many of the Chinese students and professors are getting very nervous because it's you know, technically illegal. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's just going to get more and more difficult. So if you are working with Chinese students, um, uh, I think you might need to think, rethink some, some of your options. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, he's a student that's here in Texas. I mean, he just needs to get a new email address, I think. Yeah, oh, he, encourage right. him to get a Gmail yeah. account. Right. If, if right. he's living in the States. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, well, and the other comment I had about the, you know, when the students get the um, 
email for the first time. The e the video for some that is very difficult to un, to follow, you know, at a lower level. Mm -hmm. And so they, you know, it's better if you can do it in class with them and kind of walk through them. I think that's right. Yeah, and so there, there are a couple, again, that resource is offered to you for you to use at your discretion, right? right. Um, it might be that you also teach your learners how to uh, change the speed of a YouTube video mm -hmm. because it's simply the speech that's too fast. Right. Or you say, nope, I'm going to have to break this down even more. You know, so it's you really know your learners best as far as what they can manage. Um, or you can kind of try a, a, a house approach where you say, um, everybody watch this and come to class and then you deal with the ones who didn't succeed. Right. Right. So lots of little strategies there. Um, so when we come back to the, yeah, Doug. Karen, I, I'm just curious, is clip for, clip folio only available on the telephone or can I get it on my laptop? Um, it's, that's interesting. you you put it that way. Do you access it on your telephone? No. So no, you just I, I haven't used it at all. That's why I'm asking. Ah, it is a desktop app, to my knowledge. Okay. I've never accessed it on a phone. Um, I would be afraid of it on a phone, frankly. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's for me. It's something that it's a third-party tool. We're looking forward to developing um, our own dashboard that you're going to build. <laughs> Okay. In the long term, I have this plot, which is I'm going to um, collect teachers who want to contribute to building our own. Um, we're not going to do the dev work, right? But we're going to build the functionality by talking about what we want and what we need in, across our programs, because we're using this data for real reasons. Um, I'm just going to give you another glimpse of Clipfolio. Uh, it so happened that Nancy, you know, she said, what about the users in Singapore? And it's just, there was a story of these there are these women in Singapore who are super users. This is them. The super users, uh, you may be wondering what you're looking at, by the way. You think, well, what does it mean to be somebody who has played a total of three, th 391,818 total points? What's a point? Well, a ten, 100 points is about 10 minutes of play. So here's your formula. If anyone wants to get out their little calculator. It's the number of points divided by 600, and that'll give you the number of hours that that student has played. And once you've, has anybody done that little calculation, uh, you can put that in the chat. <laughs> uh, but these are super users who uh, not only have played, well, they clearly for a long time because they've accumulated these many points, but look at the number of students in this group of, of you know, a pretty good group um, who consistently play seven days a week. Um, if I go back in the data, which I won't because I'll be revealing personal information, um, you'll see that, again, this is this week, and this is only Thursday. The week begins on a Sunday and ends on Sunday. And so these folks are on their way to their sevens. That's the kind of play that we need to foster. Um, and this really gets into what the app is for. So let me take that as an opportunity to, uh, to talk about that and to show a bit about what we do. Okay, there's a lot of knowing information out there. You can learn about pronunciation if you're a learner. You can buy a book. Uh, you can watch a lot of videos out there that are about pronunciation, what you need to do in order to be more effective. There's not as much or not very much at all out there that involves actual practice and habit formation. And that's what we do with Blue Canoe. We form habits that lead to positive speech routines that lead to higher comprehensibility and more confidence as a result. Um, so if you look at something like, I mean, if you, if you look at the, the well-known apps like Rosetta Stone or Babbel or, or um, Duolingo, uh, they actually don't typically address pronunciation directly anyway, um, or not very deeply. Um, but if they do, it's in a very, you know, right and wrong kind of uh, feedback and you don't know why it's wrong. You just know that it's wrong. So we aim to provide the depth on how it's wrong and how to make an improvement. Um, however, the app requires the method to take place in the learner's body. Uh, so everything else you've seen out there, anything that's an app, pretty much anything involves uh, holding it in your hand and touching it and looking at it, 
Those are kind of the three pieces, holding, touching, looking. And using Blue Canoe effectively, and what I know these uh, women in Singapore have been doing is that they use the open hand that is part of our methodology, where we highlight the stressed syllable with a kinesthetic uh, gesture that it creates the time on vowel that's needed to be an English speaker. Okay, so we can say that and then um, learners go back and they do what they're nor they normally do. So you, the teacher, play a very important role in their success. Um, you're going to be, you can give yourself a, a persona, you know, the bossy aunt or the, the pushy uncle or whatever it is that helps you feel that role the best. Uh, but you're going to be persistent and you're going to check and you're going to have them model for each other and you're going to model. Okay. Um, because it's not enough to say you need to use your hand. Oh, okay. Well, they won't, you know, they're not used to it. Um, but they will find that as they use their hand, they will actually start to get higher and higher scores on the activities. Uh, any, any affirmations of that or comments on that topic of the bodily interaction with the app and the use of repetition? Not so much right now. What I know is I've watched students who weren't using their hands and then do, and suddenly the scores from the 40s and into the 70s and 80s. And in terms of that, that holistic score of comprehensibility. I'll give you an example of, of what we mean here. Um, I won't be able to replicate you know, what learners get with the app, um, but, and we have some footage where this has happened, but I think I'd like to just share for our new people a bit of what we're talking about here. So let me see, are you, you're looking at my phone, great. So in, in Blue Canoe, uh, here's today's lesson plan. Um, we need learners to know, you know, this is pretty clear, like we've marked it up pretty nicely. They wanna get green dots after each one of these activities. When they do get that dot and they get all three of them, then their day becomes a fully green mark and they can go back in their profile and see their history as a full calendar. So that's pretty neat. Um, they can move into the browse section after they've finished their lesson or, or at any time actually, and browse through the different games that we have and the different activities and topics. Um, so if we come here to say um, math and science, these are probably, I think the most beneficial activities after they've gotten their word practice down. Uh, these are sentences that are in sets of six uh, each lesson that you start has six sentences that need to be finished in order to gain the points that come with them. So quitting after two or three sentences is not going to earn the points that they want to get, okay? It needs to be all six. Um, if we come into something like the scientific method, um, you know, you can, you get to decide whether this is what your learner needs. Um, when you purchase the app through your school, by the way, you can decide which lessons you want to have available and which ones you don't. Mostly teachers like to have all of them available because adult learners like to look around. Um, but just saying that in some contexts, you may want to limit it down to beginning topics so that we don't overwhelm the learners. Okay. Here in the app, um, you can listen to the sentence and more than can, I, I sort of catch myself. How often do you find somebody gives a tour of a product? They say, you can do this and you can do that. And you're like, but I don't wanna know just what I can do. I wanna know what I should do. Have you ever had that feeling? Your learners need to know what they should do. So if you've already been doing a bit of that instructional work with the app, change all of your cans to should. You should listen first to the sentence and try um, not to look at it so much, but to listen. So we listen. The scientific method is a way to investigate cause and effect. Use your hand like I did as we listen again. The scientific method is a way to investigate cause and effect. I then can speak with it. The, the scientific, scientific method, method is a way to investigate cause and effect. I can then speak after it. The scientific method is a way to investigate cause and effect. And I'll record while I do that. The scientific method is a way to investigate cause and effect. I stop recording. It takes some time to send that recording up into the cloud where we have our software. It evaluates and it's evaluating with prioritization. So it's not evaluating everything equally, but rather it starts with 
peak stress, that primary stress in the most important words. Right? All right, I got a really nice score. Um, give yourself a little leeway, you know, plus or minus five, plus or minus six. Let your learners be kind to themselves. If they get 95, that is very, very good. Okay, they shouldn't uh, be concerned that they can't get to 100 um, if they're in the 90s, and especially up by 99, that's great. Okay. Um, if Karen I might want to mention too, like that it's sometimes harder for native English speakers to get a good score. Like I know I have a terrible time and often get like 60% and right. something like that. And it's and very it is, frustrating. And it is, it's very good to know. And it, it should only be frustrating so long as, as you have the implicit belief that your English is made for the kind of evaluation that's done in Blue Canoe. But Janet and I have talked and, and we know Blue Canoe is made for non-native English speakers. So think of it this way, um, Janet might get feedback on something that doesn't seem like, I mean, it isn't a problem at all. Janet's a speaker of English, she's a valid speaker of English. But if you're getting feedback on a vowel and a learner has done it in that way with a combination of other skills uh, that aren't quite on target, that vowel feedback can guide them as sort of their North Star to become more comprehensible. Um, in other words, when if, if we take the approach of trying to fix everything all at once for a learner, um, it's overwhelming. And so we focus on the stressed vowel sound. So then when a native speaker tries to use the app and gets that feedback, it's not applicable because you don't have all of those other features that need adjustment. Does that make sense? It's almost like a, a medication that is made uh, for somebody with a particular condition. And when you take that medicine, it affects, it affects you badly, or it's, it doesn't affect you in the same way, at least. Uh, it's simply not made for native speech. So then you'll find yourself trying to trick the system into uh, believing that you've made an error that a non-native speaker would make. And some of us are, are better at doing that than others. <laughs> I've watched some teachers try to make mistakes that are still within the realm of spoken English that's comprehensible. Um, so you'll find, you know, you'll find your way, but, but do um, detach yourself from that frustration, Janet, because there's, we know there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, we can understand you, right? Um, so that's, that's really my advice about that. Thank you for raising it because I've had some other teachers worried about it too, okay? Um, but when learners do get feedback, this is getting back to a content question like Lori first asked. You could ask, you know, why are these words underlined and these other ones don't have underlines? Or you could ask a question like, um, if I'm looking at the app again, um, you could ask a question like, do my students always have to, you know, if I go to the next question, do they always have to see it? What if they want to challenge themselves? And we can learn, oh, if you go up here, you can actually hide the hints and give yourself a more challenging um, experience. Okay, uh, so these are content, meaning inside of the app type questions that we have a place for in our pilot program. Okay, um, but there are some that are around the app, like when should I use the app? Should it be during the lesson or is it after the lesson? Um, how often should I talk about Blue Canoe in class? Uh, how can I leverage these points in a certain way? These are around the app. And then there are of course, logistical things like onboarding, and account creation and so forth. So in other words, it's not as simple as giving students the app and then setting them off on their way and never talking about it again. Uh, if you're interested in Blue Canoe, it's because you are also interested in ColorVal and you now also need to be interested professionally in tech onboarding and support. Uh, not that you have to solve all the problems, but that you have to be ready with strategies to connect and ask for help or to go and, and know that these questions have been asked before and are collected for you. Um, so with no further ado, I, we've collected a lot of you know, helpful scenarios of the kind of support and questions you have. And rather than making it a giant Q and A or a FAQ um, on one page, which we've had over on the Blue Canoe website, we have now created a space that's going to evolve, but that I'd like to introduce you to now. This is the teacher pilot program um, in Canvas. Those of you who have studied blue, uh, sorry, studied color vowel with us, either the level one basics 
the complete course or the fast course or any of the level two workshops already know that we run our courses in um, a, a platform called Canvas. So this symbol up here is Canvas. Jennifer is our Canvas maven. She has made all this happen in less than a year. Um, and those of you who have known me for a long time and Colorvel, uh, for example, Doug, uh, you've been with me for a lot, several years now, yeah. and he's watched quite a transition, right? Um, so we use Canvas for our courses, and, and I'm sure there's going to be a future iteration of this. But for now, what I'm providing you, the reason I'm calling this a pilot is, is partly because I'm trying to give you that new identity. You know, you can put on your pilot's goggles or whatever your metaphor is, uh, whatever your imagination is. But you, you're going to need to be um, as curious about the education technology as we all are about the language aspect of using an app for pronunciation um, because you need to be able to be a, a critical consumer of what we do provide in feedback and, and at times what we don't provide and why, okay? And all the while recognizing that this is always a work in progress. Every app out there should be a work in progress. If it's not, then it's static and then I'd be worried. I mean, I suppose I want my banking app to be maybe static. I don't want it changing all the time, but um, a good educational app is always seeking to um, make improvements either in what we call in the product, which is the app itself, um, or in the support structures around it, which would be the dashboard and a course like this. Okay, so I'll refer to this as a course. I'll refer to this as a space. It's not technically a course because you don't have to begin and end it and prove that. There are no quizzes. There's simply information here. As you'll see, uh, there is a discussion board up at the top where you can post observations and questions. You can introduce yourself. Uh, we have a new te teacher dashboard wish list, a Blue Canoe wish list. Uh, this is a place to document what we would like to see in the app and in the dashboard moving forward. It's not a promise that it can happen this week or this even this year, but everything in its time. And it gives us something to prioritize. We can at least sift through comments and decide uh, you know, through the likes and through the comments that, wow, this is a really important wish item, okay? Um, we then have discussions for each of the four phases that um, are presented in the homepage, okay? So that's why we have a link here to the discussion board as well. But essentially when you use Blue Canoe, every time you introduce students, you're going to go through these four phases, right? You're going to prepare to launch. You're going to get to know your students, um, know their hardware, know their software, <laughs> how much they uh, know of their own technology capability. And so this is the first phase that I've built out a little bit. And again, this is a week and a half old. It's going to become more graphic. Uh, we'll find ways to organize content um, more and more effectively. But as uh, this was one piece that I, I found myself wanting to reach out to everybody and say these things in advance. You know, if you're thinking about using Blue Canoe with your students, um, make sure you start getting to know your own Blue Canoe. You know, start playing with it, use it. Um, if you've done level one training, you know, you've already touched it a bit because I walk you through it. But if it's been a while, go back in and kind of remind yourself of the learner's experience. Um, we have that, that video that I mentioned earlier and that Amanda has used, um, the video by Lynn Swanda, that kind of reminds you of the steps involved in getting logged in. So you can start thinking about your particular learners and what kind of support they're going to need, okay? And by the way, uh, just because your learners are advanced doesn't mean that they're tech savvy. Has anybody found that to be true? <laughs> You can understand it theoretically, right? <laughs> we can have an advanced learner of English who really doesn't feel that comfortable with the technology. So this video is made for all kinds of tech novices um, at quite a few of the levels, okay? Um, planning your itinerary, this is my metaphor gone awry again, um, but thinking about uh, whether you're doing the free eight-week eight classroom trial. Uh, I'll just say that this text is oriented toward a first-time teacher using Blue Canoe. We have the free eight week classroom trial is available at, to everybody who hears this today, uh, but it's available once. And this is a major shift in the model, which is that during pandemic, Blue Canoe provided very generous free access to schools. 
But since the pandemic started, um, I've now become CEO of Blue Canoe. I've assessed where we are with keeping our model uh, sustainable and available to our teachers and our learners. And we have to work with teachers to say, you're going to try this. I'm going to support you to figure out whether this has been effective for your learners and you. And then I'm going to work with you and support you to talk with your organization about purchasing Blue Canoe. Because just like any textbook or any other material that your students need and use, there's a budget item for that. So uh, we'll be you know, using the eight week classroom trial for everything. It's getting learners into it, seeing how they respond to it, and then imagining a curriculum and a course where Blue Canoe is actually one of your, you know, your course materials, your textbook. Um, it might even help eliminate the need for an extra textbook because how many of you have ever bought a textbook that focuses on pronunciation in addition to a course? If you're expected to get through the whole, you know, both textbooks, you might not have time. But there's Blue Canoe reinforcing vocabulary. There's grammar built into it, though it's not explicit, it's implicit. And all of that practice. So, so this is the eight-week classroom trial. And again, everybody here is eligible to take it on. Eight weeks is just, you know, two months. Um, if you know that you want to use it for your entire year, then you can already get started with a purchasing request. Okay. But this is why we, we include the free classroom trial is, is now uh, with that forward movement, that shift in mindset. Okay. Getting to know your passengers is an important piece of this, knowing their tech skills that I mentioned at the beginning of today's presentation. Um, taking a tour of Blue Canoe and Color Vowel. If you're new to Color Vowel, um, you need to know at least some basics. And uh, so we provide lots of ways to do that. And then a preview of your destination. This is very important in the concept of pilot. And here I'll stop share so I can speak very directly with you. Um, we've, we're all comfortable watching our students and saying, oh, I, I've heard a lot of great things from them about uh, this material or that material. So that would be very anecdotal kind of evidence that we like this material, we wanna continue. Uh, maybe you have lots of great anecdotes about color vowel. You know, a lot of folks bring wonderful stories to us. But when it comes to purchasing, and every organization has a budget, by the way, the question is how often do the teachers avail themselves of that budget? And how many teachers are um, really not comfortable even thinking about money for their students? Okay, so this is a little change of identity. Um, but when you go to somebody about purchasing, there will be questions like, well, what is it? And well, how does it, how do you know it works? You know, what does it do? And those are the questions that you'll want to be prepared for. And honestly, I think we should all be asking those questions from the beginning. So the pilot is that idea of evaluation. And with any software you're using, you should be in the evaluator state of mind always, right? So what kinds of things can we ask learners before and after that would help us gauge uh, the efficacy of Blue Canoe? Right. Um, we can watch their pronunciation, but it takes longer than eight weeks. So what can we do in eight weeks that we can actually uh, document as a change? One of those is confidence, right? Uh, Nancy, where are you going to? Um, I will tell you, um, and I, uh, I only was able to use it for uh, less than eight weeks because I left my job. But what I noticed is that my classes, my students, were speaking English and I wasn't even doing it right, as we both know. Um, but their competence in speaking English was absolute night and day. And, and I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew this thing was cool. So that hey, was huge. That was yeah, huge. confidence. So confidence, yeah, yeah. the confidence yeah. that comes in the short term and the confidence that grows over time with habit formation. Okay, so those would be things that you can evaluate and here in the, uh, the teacher pilot program course space, we provide, and, and we'll continue building these, but just a very simple pre-post survey of, uh, on a scale of one to five, fill out this tiny survey. Uh -huh. Tell me how you feel when you speak English. Are you confident? Yes or no, you know, one or five. Uh, people understand me when I speak English to them. I understand other people when they speak English to me. I know what to do if someone doesn't understand me. 
I know effective strategies for practicing and improving. So collect those and eight weeks later, you'll collect them again. And that is evidence right there. That is the simplest kind of action research you can do, but it doesn't take much time. It's easy to put together. And before long, we'll make it even easier with some links to uh, Google Docs, or sorry, Google Forms that you can copy for yourself and use. So, you know, just know that you can do a very simple, it could be on an index card if you are, you know, in the paper pen world, all of that's feasible, okay? Um, but all of this is the kind of support we provide even in one of these phases, let alone all of them, okay? Um, the course space then takes you through your launch with detailed support about what to do, a detailed tour of Clipfolio, that's your tool. And if you haven't, if you used it before and you haven't really considered Clipfolio like a daily thing, I would say that the first uh, two weeks, it's an everyday kind of reference. And then it becomes a, every few days kind of reference toward the end of the week, especially midweek, uh, so that throughout the pilot and throughout your use, you're able to keep learner engagement up, okay? Because it's very easy to forget about a tool that you're supposed to use regularly. Um, I know that from my diet app that I use very often and then abandon and then I go back to. Uh, so if, if you've ever used something like Noom or one of those exercise apps, they'll have like little reminders like, hey, haven't seen you for a few days. Um, we do that too in Blue Canoe, but, but you are that extra cheerleader to keep them up and going, okay? Um, what is the arc of Blue Canoe in terms of uh, getting everything you can out of it. Any thoughts on, on that guess? Like how long should a user use it? Any thoughts for those of you who have used it? If we can get them to use it for 10 minutes a day, they usually will do more than that. Yeah. And the other thing is to try to get them to do it at the same time every day. That's right. And try to integrate it into their schedule. Good. So, so Doug's addressed the question of how long in terms of how much time per day and when, okay? And those are two cornerstone behaviors of daily, same time of day. It's a lot like exercise, isn't it? You know, if you, if you form that routine, you're more likely to complete the routine each day, okay? Um, and then there's the other question, which is for how long in, in calendar time um, will a user use Blue Canoe? You know, is it a three-year journey? Is it a two-day journey? Um, Nancy just described, you know, a matter of weeks of mm -hmm. learners, you know, finding, gain confidence, uh, but maybe it changes over time, which it does, okay? So, so I'll say that what we found is it's between six and 12 months is the real sweet spot for uh, noticeable improvement and noticeable change in the way people respond to the learner in English, okay? Um, so these are just a few of the factors. It's, you know, we're coming to the end of our session and I never consider these kinds of sessions a, a finished conversation, but very much a beginning of a, of a, of a big and long conversation, a good one. Um, what I will be doing with some of the ideas from today is going back into that canvas shell. And, and in order to really wrap things up today, you need to know how to get there, okay? Um, so to wrap things up that way, we've made it very easy to get started with the teacher pilot program, and that is on the Blue Canoe website, which I'm sharing with you now in the chat, okay? That's bluecanoelearning.com, essentially, but I'll go ahead and give you um, the uh, direct link to the page, which is the teacher's page, okay? When you go to that teacher's page, it looks like this. I want to welcome Gilson, by the way. Hello, Gilson. Welcome. Okay, there we go. So here, uh, it's changed a little bit, folks. If you've been to our website before, um, this is a new page for you. Uh, it combines the beginning of the journey for a new teacher. You know, try it for yourself. Try it with students. Free eight-week classroom trial. Um, order licenses. So we help you out. We get you started with the pilot program. So even if you have used Blue Canoe before, like Amanda, you're using it right now as part of your own business, go ahead and sign up here. And I, I think you have, I've seen you in the little, yeah, I've seen you there on the table. Um, sign up here and you get an immediate email with a link to that Canvas course that you can access, okay? Um, so that's the key is to fill out the form. I do watch for emails and organizational information. So I know that teachers are accessing this group 
and not um, just anybody who fills out the form, just so uh, if anybody was curious about that, okay? Um, we'll ask you if you already have a Blue Canoe account and, you know, about color valve training and so forth, okay? Down below are all of the resources that some of you might be very familiar with that used to be on a separate page. So just know that all of these have found their home also in our Canvas course, right? The space. And there will be more and more uh, short videos, minute and two minute videos that help really highlight the so what of each, of each section. And eventually this will you know, probably become a deeper, more multifaceted uh, space. But for now, it's a, a number of pages basically that contain links and resources as well as files, okay? Um, so that's, that's kind of the so what of today. If you are interested in purchasing and renewing, uh, we provide some information um, on that final page with some price uh, options and also with kind of a schematic understanding that learners can get the app from their app store or you can organize it through your school and have a dashboard to watch their activity. But those two things are distinct and we build that out in this table for you to know what's included from individual access versus group access. And that would be you, organizations and educators, okay? Um, so, and this is also just to say, those of you who have experienced little glitches with students like Amanda, um, once in a while you'll have a student who has trouble logging in and it'll be because they've had the individual version in the past and we have to kind of do a little magic on the back end to move them into this place. So when you need help, we provide it. Our support team is always working hard. Um, I just love them. Um, we have two people back there doing that work with me, and that's been, you know, wonderful for me to see all the different kinds of questions that come in. Um, but no technology is perfect. Uh, I don't think you'll find that with with any app that does complicated work, which ESL is a complex field. We know that. Okay, uh, we'll always aim to provide you with the support you need. Um, so know that the channels are open. Um, I'm at Karen at bluecanoelearning.com. Um, I'm also over at ColorVal, but ColorVal matters can be addressed to Jennifer at ColorVal.com. Uh, so I'm at Blue Canoe and she's at ColorVal and I'm still in both places, okay? Um, but I just look forward to working with you moving forward because we're going to do very exciting things with Blue Canoe in the coming year. And I can't wait to, you know, to invite you to be part of that, that process. So I hope you'll join uh, that Canvas group. Any questions or comments before we sign off? I was just glad to see that students have the option of getting it individually because in my mind, I was thinking, do I want to dangle this lovely carrot in front of them for eight weeks? And then if my organization decides that it can't, not that it doesn't want to, but that it can't for some reason, um, you know, that they at least have that option of continuing. I have some students who have used it and are quite familiar with it. And I think they would like this a lot, but I never could figure out exactly how to get started in a way that they could continue it on their own. So that's right. It's nice to know I, we have that option. <laughs> that's right, they can. And, um, and, and Lori, thank you for coming. I see that you have to run off pretty soon. But Nadu, you're right. It, it's easy not to know that, that they can actually go to the App Store uh, or Google Play if they are on an Android phone and they can purchase it for themselves so long as they have a means of purchasing apps. And most, you know, a lot of students do. Uh, around the world, there are certain regions that have difficulty purchasing uh, through those means. I recently had a, somebody contact me about, uh, you know, I wish you all would accept Bitcoin. <laughs> I was like, I'm not ready for that yet. I really don't understand it yet. <laughs> I didn't say it like that, but I was like, wow, I, I guess that's where everything's going to go. But for the time being, uh, I'll leave it to the App Store and Google Play to do those transactions. And, and they do. So um, that's it's a different way for a student to access. And there are different prices depending on whether it's uh, monthly, a half a year or a whole year. Okay, other couple, comments? A couple of things that I've been doing is when I first started this class, I got them all to get the browser. They all got the browser extension and they use that sometimes. Yeah. And then uh, when they ask me in class how to pronounce a word, I don't tell them I get out my phone and, and battle it up. So they're all anxious to get started. Yeah, for those of you who are curious about browser extension, um, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up, um, Doug, because some folks have been writing to me saying, how can I, I can't download it, where is it? 
for my desktop. And I was like, oh, I think they're confused. They might think that the browser extension is the app when no, what it is, I just opened up Wikipedia here and you can see up here that I have some different little icons. They're very tiny, uh, but these are little extensions. And so I have, you know, this one is the Zoom extension. Here's my Blue Canoe extension and I can go in and, and shift the options around. Okay, but this is not the app. This is a dictionary, it's a browser plugin that allows me to be on the web and to double click or do a shift click as I've done uh, to look up any word on the internet. Now that's super powerful. Doug, you your students use it a lot, is that right? Yeah, they do because I, I use ReadWorks a lot so at home. So they, they, <laughs> they get a, a, an online reading article and they'll look up words on it all the time. So, so very powerful for supporting effective reading. If they're going to read a short article and then have a discussion about it online, that's when the browser extension is very powerful, especially. Um, notice, you know, a word like situated. I think I know a lot of uh, students who would say situated or situated uh, when oh, they're like, oh, so it's silver pin situated. 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 Okay. I have it set to a Spanish translation. Your students can set it to a different translation, I believe. Okay, I'm not sure how many languages are available, but you can look oh, there. Oh, cool. Okay, uh, it might, you know, now that I'm saying that, it might be um, possible in Spanish. Ha, you can pick all kinds there. So there's Romanian, we can just do it that way, right? <laughs> and now the next one that I get to would be something like, um, let's see. Come on. So is that Portuguese? Is that Portugal or Brazil? Yeah, good question. <laughs> uh, now I forget what I have here is my, my cue for getting this thing to work. <laughs> so you have to play around with it a little bit and some of you are probably better at it than I am. Um, but if we go back here, it's something like a uh, shift for me. Ah. Nope, nope, it's not gonna work now. I'm, I'm doing that thing where you're watching me and so then it's bound to be problematic. So I will stop. <laughs> like now let's watch Karen type, you know? <laughs> All right. So the browser extension is pretty neat. Any other, there was a final comment I think from Amanda. Oh, we can't hear you yet. There we go. I just had a question on that. Um, what you show for camp this, it talks about three lesson plans. Yeah. That will be provided. Do you want to just talk about that a little bit? Yeah, um, Jennifer uh, has been putting together three uh, fabulous lesson plans that I've had the pleasure of teaching. So these are piloted lesson plans. I delivered them with a pretty, you know, a challenging audience of middle schoolers online during the pandemic. So I figured if I could make those fly in that context that you can make them fly in yours too. Okay. <laughs> uh, but Jennifer's a master curriculum developer. Jennifer, you wanna say anything else about those? They're coming soon. Okay. Um, the, the first two are done. Um, I'm just getting the third one. And I think um, we, we might go ahead and just uh, post the first two. Uh, but they, they're, um, they're lesson plans that will help you introduce color vowel at the same time as you're introducing blue canoe. So it's, it's uh, and, and you know, you can adapt them to um, your style and, um, but are you using speeds. the are you using the app at the same time? I mean, is it is it would they you have the app in class and uh, the first one um, basically takes you through the onboarding process and okay. sort of how to get them uh, to teach them how to uh, mm -hmm. download the app and get on it, and then um, the uh, the second uh, lesson is mostly about the. Um, uh, the the games, how to teach them to use the games, okay. and uh, the uh, third lesson is about um, the sentence based lessons and how to use those. So okay. you, it's actually teaching them how to use the app, to use their open hand, um, and then gives them time to practice so that you can watch them and make sure that they're using it in a way that's going to um, be the most beneficial. Yeah. Okay. So. Thank it you. essentially builds in a few things that because we, we like to give the benefit of the doubt, you know, oh, I'm sure everybody knows this. I don't want to bore them, but we actually have, it's very tightly sequenced so that there are no gaps 
or minimal gaps that the learner can fall through in those first three lessons so that by the end of those three lessons, you're going to see active, 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 all through Clipfolio, knowing that they really can start practicing. They got into the app and they know why to use their hand and they know what they're doing with these things we call color vowels. Those are those three lessons. Um, so you'll, you'll see probably, Amanda, as somebody who's already done this uh, in your own way, you'll say, oh, I was doing a version of that, you know, and oh, there's what color is your name. It's already okay. fit in there a little bit. Uh, Jennifer has a really neat piece in there that that I had fun teaching with. So the, they're about an hour um, and or planned and but they could easily, you know, depending on your students and how how much explanation or practice time, you know, they could easily become, you know, two two days worth or a two hour lesson. So, you know, Very good. OK. All right. Thank you. All right, everybody. I just want to say um, I've had a great day, a great time introducing you to the um, the color uh, 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 vowel chart and blue canoe. And I hope you have a black cat fantastic day. Please come and join us over in Canvas, and I'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye bye.